Good evening. To those of you attending with us tonight and also to those watching online, uh, we appreciate you, you uh, joining us and we appreciate your interest and your participation in the proceedings of your local government. Uh, if you'd like an agenda for those of you who are present, they're in the hall to the right of the doors as you exit. Uh, to those at home, you can get an agenda on AthensClarkCounty.com. If you have a cell phone with you tonight or any other electronic device, would you please turn them off or to silent? Uh, there'll be three opportunities tonight for citizens input. Uh, our consent agenda, which are items one through five, old business items six through seven, and one final opportunity at the end of the business uh, at the end of our business for any item not on tonight's agenda. The rules of commission allow three minutes for comment. Um, there's a timing clock on Ms. Spratlin's desk, which will turn yellow at two and a half minutes, and ask you to, to please try to have your comments complete before it turns red. If you have handouts tonight that you'd like to share with the mayor and commission, please give those to Mr. Berryman. Uh, who's here at, uh, at the desk right behind the speaker's podium there, uh, and he will get to distribute them to us if, if there's something you'd like us to see. And before I begin our, our meeting tonight, I have some special people that I'd like to recognize. Uh, Commissioners Allison Wright and Jared Bailey, uh, who I assume will be here in a minute because I hadn't heard anything about him not being here, um, for their achievement at, uh, in continuing education by the County Commissioners Association. They both earned, earned the designation of a certified county commissioner with ACCG and Carl Benson Institute of Government at the University of Georgia, who worked collaboratively to provide a year-long training opportunity for Georgia elected officials. Mrs. Wright and Mr. Bailey complete, completed core curriculum and specialty track requirements in the Lifelong Learning Academy. Completion of this, speci of this specialty tracks have specific topics of interest in local government, such as public safety, intergovernmental relations, and citizens' engagement, among others. Commissioner Wright, would you come forward? Just in time, Mr. Davis. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting this mic up here because I wanted to ask uh, uh, Commissioner Wright, now, now uh, Commissioner Bailey, how many um, hours of training did y'all have to have to get this? 60, I think. 60 so, hours. It and might have been 80. It might have been uh, 90. You sure it wasn't 100? It's a lot. A lot. A lot. two years. A lot of hours. But, but I will tell you, it's a lot of hard work. And so this is something that is, is I'm, I'm very proud of these two folks. And you all ought to be proud of them, too, because you have some well-trained elected officials that care enough to, to take the time on their own time to, to go and, and get this extra training so they can be better commissioners. Is this right? Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Bailey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Did y'all have anybody to take photos of you? I do have a paparazzi. In well, come on up, come <laughs> on up closer so you get a better picture. Come on up, Jean. You want one by yourself first, or you want? Or? Uh, don't scream, Sean. Come on, come on, come on. It's I, 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 come I, I, on. I didn't know how y'all wanted to be. <laughs> One of our people here in Clark County. Um, last last mm. month, the Public Information Office was awarded a National First Place Savvy Award from 3CMA, and that stands for the count, the City County Communications and Marketing Association, at their annual conference. The Sav Savvy Award was presented for printed publications, catalogs, guides, and in, in the category for all populations. So this is not just based on the size of our county. The award was for the office's 2016 update of ACC from A to Z, a guide to athens Clark County Unified Government and Community Services. The guide is updated annually by the Public Information Office and was revamped this year as part of the recognition of the 25th anniversary of unification of the City of Athens and the Clark County governments in 1991. This award marks the eighth Savvy Award for the Public Information Office, uh, which they received since tw 2008. Uh, and Jeff Montgomery, our public information officer, would you please come forward? Do you have a photographer? No. <laughs> you got cameras around, so that'll do. And, and, and this award says honoring creative marketing and communications, printed publications, slash catalogs, guides, Athens Clark, ACC actually, starts at Athens Clark County from A to Z, September 8th, 2016 by 3CMA, 
and, and this is a, a very prestigious award in case anybody didn't catch that from what I was reading. And for any of you who don't, have not seen this, it's worth the read. This is beautiful, Jeff. Thank Thanks. you so much. There's some on the outside yeah. table. And there's some, on, there's some on the table out there if you would like to pick them up. Let me get a oh. picture for, the, for his wifey. So, <laughs> One, two, three. Got it. There's my photographer. <laughs> there, great. Thank you. <laughs> Would you close the door and let me Okay. Next on our agenda tonight, we have two new new department directors. We have two two new department directors with us tonight. Uh, we have a new public utilities director who is Frank Stevens. Uh, Frank, would you like to come up to the microphone here? Um, in fact, actually, why don't you use Bill so that, or so that you can face the audience and people can, can meet you as well, or at least turn around and say hello. Mayor and Commissioners, I'm very fortunate to join your audience. You should get Would you all please respect the people that are at the podium? Would you all please respect the people there at the podium? You all may be using your three minutes up. Madam Mayor. Turn your mic a little bit. Turn it up. Ow. Oh. Would, would, you all please, would you all please respect the people who are trying to be heard tonight? We're going to hear y'all when your turn comes. Thank you. At, at, our, at our podium now, we are, we are recognizing our new public, uh, public utilities director, Frank Stevens. Uh, Mr. Stevens, welcome. You got quite a welcome tonight, so this is going to be an unforgettable night for all of us. Thank you. So, so Mayor and Commissioners, I'm very fortunate to join your athens Clark County management team. Um, it's clear that Clark County is the place to live and to work. Uh, the Public Utilities Department in particular has many smart and energetic people, people with lots of ideas for improvement. I've worked in four utilities in three different states, and clearly this is the best. Um, it's a privilege to be part of the improvements that are already underway uh, in city government and in the department. And I'm thrilled to be a part of the teams on, uh, on the startup of some exciting new ventures. I'd like to thank you and particularly thank Mr. Williams. Mr. Stevens, I may recognize you again next month so people can hear what you had to say. Thank you. <laughs> and we, we have another department head, but I think I'm going to postpone recognizing you so that you can actually get a, get a fair recognition uh, at our next meeting. So we will now uh, move on to our business meeting. <clears throat> Our first, our first item of business is our, uh, well, I need to call the roll first. Would you call the roll, Ms. Brantley? Dickerson. Here. Sims. Here. Blink. Here. Nice Wright. Here. Here. Bailey. Present. Neesmith. Present. Dale. Here. Harrod. Present. Gertz. Here. And Hamby. Here. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion for approval of minutes? So moved. Second. second. Have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have any written communication, Ms. Brantley? No, okay. There will be three opportunities for public <laughs> input tonight. <clears throat> the first is on our consent agenda, which are items one through five. The second is, is on our old business, which are items um, six and seven. And then at the end of the meeting, there will be an opportunity for anyone who, uh, to speak to any item that is not on tonight's agenda. And before we start our agenda, 
something that may be of interest to some of you out there uh, is, is that it's my intent to put the, uh, the discrimination ordinance for alcohol back on next month's agenda. So if, if, you're, if, if you're there for that reason, I thought that might be of interest to you here at the, at the beginning of the meeting. And, and please, please, I ask you all for us to be able to conduct a responsible meeting tonight. We have other business. If you all would please re refrain from singing and demonstrating so we can do the city's work. I'm not surprised. <laughs> if, if anyone would like to speak to items on our consent agenda, which are items one through five, it, this would be the time to come to the podium, give us your name, your address, and which item you're speaking to. And officer, would you close the door Ma for, yeah, for those you, that are not in here? Yes, sir. I suggest if, if the folks in the hallway are interrupting the meeting where other citizens can't say what they need to be heard, that they be asked to step outside. Yes, I, I think that's a good idea. Officer, did you hear that? If, if, the, if the noise gets to the point that it's interrupting our meeting, would you ask people to step outside? And, and it is, in fact, that's our... That's what you write intercoms for. Why would I step outside? I think it's not loud enough if you ask me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry, but, you're, the, but this is... The mayor is conducting this meeting. We, you will be heard. You will have your opportunity at the podium. But we have other business to take care of. And our commissioners up here need to have the opportunity to discuss these issues. Uh, the public who is viewing it online and who will be viewing it on TV also need to be able to hear it. And folks here that are in the audience that are here for other, other items of, of interest need to be able to hear. So those who, who cannot just conduct themselves quietly, officers will ask you to leave and wait outside until the time that you, it's your turn to come to the podium. So, thank you, officers. Uh, we will, uh, would anyone like to speak to any of the items one through five? Okay, seeing none, we'll come behind the agenda. Are there any commissioners who would like to remove an item from, from the consent agenda? Madam Mayor, I move for adoption of the consent agenda. Second. We have some ordinances, Mr. Behrman. Just, just one. Thank you. It's an ordinance to amend the Code of Athens, Clark County, Georgia, with respect to parking restrictions on Gresham Street and for other purposes. That's all. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Do we, did I get a second? Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we will now move to um, old business, which are items six and seven. If anyone would like to speak to one of these items, uh, please come to the podium. Again, give us your name and address, which item you're speaking to, and um, remember our three-minute rule. Would anyone like to speak to one of those items? Okay, seeing none, we'll uh, come behind the rail now. And item number six is our TSPLOS 2017 program. Uh, and I believe Mr. Neesmith has a commission found option. Yes, ma'am, it is. And, and it's, uh, it's cutting a finer point, I have to admit. But I found the, uh, uh, the, the draft before us to be a little, a little imprecise. Uh, and I think it's very important that we charge the Citizens Advisory Committee with uh, more precise language than what we had here. Uh, so, for example, uh, my, my commission defined options uh, in regards to pavement maintenance is significantly improve the pavement maintenance schedule, which replaces the wording to protect the community's transportation infrastructure by catching up on pavement maintenance. We don't really know if that's feasible, and we don't know if that's the top priority. So. Certainly that's a goal we should have, but I think that we should charge the committee with improving that schedule. Um, also, um, the item that's, uh, the second bullet says promote the use of alternative modes of transportation. Uh, that seems uh, redundant uh, with some of the other points in the ordinance uh, and also a bit imprecise. And so I have suggested that we uh, promote upgrading and upgrade, promote the upgrade and continued use of all transportation facilities owned by the county. Um, there's another one that says uh, reduce vehicle miles traveled and traffic congestion. Well, frankly, I'm not sure how we can reduce the miles traveled, uh, but we certainly want to reduce traffic con congestion. And so I'm suggesting that we say re reduce traffic congestion by improving intersections and traffic control devices. 
I'm suggesting that we uh, also delete the one that says reduce time spent traveling in vehicles because that's what traffic congestion and improved traffic devices will accomplish. I'm not quite sure else we, how we would do that. Uh, and it also says uh, promote increased usage of the transit system. To me, that's very, very fuzzy. That could be anything from marketing to I don't know what. But I think what we're trying to do is increase the effectiveness and convenience of the transit routes and infrastructure, which uh, is a, a bit uh, broader and uh, accomplishes what we're after. Um, so, um, Special consideration, I, I made only a few changes there. Let me see what they are. Actually, oh, uh, there was a last bullet that said continu continued downtown bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure improvements. I don't recall us saying that downtown is the only place that needs that, so I simply am suggesting we said continued bike and pedestrian infrastructure improvements. So as I said, it's just cutting a finer point, but I think it makes it a little clearer to the Citizens Advisory Committee as to what we are, and also broadens a point or two that need to be broadened. Have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. <coughs> have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Uh, oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Gertz. Madam Mayor, just uh, want to address the question that had emerged several times, okay. both within our meetings as well as kind of within mm -hmm. private discussion in the community about the date for the referendum. And just want to say, well, I mean, I think there were strong points to be made in a variety of directions. The 2017 date at the end of the day is the one that seems to make the most sense, given our ability to separate it from the following regular SPLOS referendum. Um, and given that these are all transportation projects rather than the great variety of projects that we see in a SPLOS with a cooperative extension kind of thing or a fire department upgrade, I think this is manageable. Anyone else want to comment? And I want to clarify because. Uh, I haven't reread this since I read it after the before the agenda city meeting. Is the date in in this ordinance, Bill? It's in the, the, the election date since general schedule. goals. Okay, and we have November in there. Yes. Okay. So so we have have a motion and second. Any, any further discussion? Don't want to leave anybody out. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. D. Smith. Uh, and then item seven is the proposed downtown development authority boundary change, which in, will include contiguous Athens Clark County properties. Uh, anyone want to open uh, discussion, Mr. Handy? Sure, I'll go ahead. This is a, a request that's coming to you by the uh, Downtown Development Authority. It's a project we've been working on for uh, for quite some time now. Uh, we um, are um, in the process of engaging property owners within the new proposed boundary areas, and hopefully we'll get some good feedback on that so that we can pass that along to our state legislators. And what this item is asking you to do is to... Uh, to approve this, uh, this was part of the downtown master plan that we uh, uh, engaged with uh, Professor Crowley um, a couple years ago now, and uh, so this is one of uh, the things that uh, was recommended to come out of that, some increased boundaries of the of the downtown development authority, uh, and so this is just the first step in the process. Certainly, the state legislature will have to approve this, but the first step is, uh, of course, asking this body to ask the state legislature to do such things. So. At any rate, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we uh, approve uh, the proposed downtown uh, boundary change. Thank you. Second. second. I have a motion, second. Is there any discussion questions? Well, okay. I sort of have some discussion. <laughs> yeah. um, and maybe things have changed, but when I was working for the Solid Waste Department, the downtown, the, the downtown tax district was different than the central business district. And it was set up because there were special needs for that downtown tax district. And I've had some conversations, actually, while this has been going on, trying to make sure we clarify what that means for the people who are coming in and what that means for our services that are delivered. Um, I created back in 95, I mean, again, this may have changed, but back in 95 when we were developing the standards for downtown, we were changing the whole service delivery plan for downtown. We um, had specific activities that were supposed to be provided or services that were supposed to be provided to those businesses. Curbside collection of garbage, if you didn't have a placement for a, a dumpster, or a roll-off type container, um, street uh, pressure washing, street sweeping, um, litter pickup, you know, not so much meters. But anyway, I just, I just want to make sure that, we, that, that it's understood what this means 
Um, and, and that I'm not wrong. I mean, I, I could be wrong. It may have changed since I've been gone. I just thought that, that there was a higher level of service for that area, and that's why you pay that extra tax. Would you clarify, clarify. Mr. Williams? <laughs> Commissioner Dickerson is correct. Um, there is a higher level of service uh, for the downtown Athens tax, tax district for solid waste uh, because it has unique development characteristics. Uh, she mentioned space limitation, you know, pedestrian traffic, and things of that nature. So there, there will be um, a higher level of service uh, that these folks will be a part of as a mandatory expansion uh, of the downtown Athens tax district. Thank you. Madam Mayor. And Ms. if Tandy. I could just add something to that, and, and of course that is that is part of the part of the uh, selling point to the to the businesses along this area being part of it. Uh, the newer areas, though, however, do have a lot of already existing um, garbage containers that they that they utilize. And such as that, and I'm sure there's some others that, that would want to take advantage of the of the curbside service, but they they do pay an extra mill in property tax uh, for for this service, and 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 certainly uh, that will that will help provide some some of the services that we're looking at, but it also will enable these businesses to take advantage of being part of the authority when uh, with regards to access to perhaps some small business loans. Uh, some facade grant programs. So there's some, certainly some benefits of being in the Downtown Development Authority that we hope people will realize by paying that extra one mil in property tax. And, and we are planning to have an open house sometime in December uh, that the commission, mayor and commission will be invited to along with other uh, properties downtown and newer property, proposed properties as well. Our director did send out uh, a letter to each and individual property owner uh, in the proposed area outlining uh, what their proposed millage rate would be plus uh, plus uh, yeah outlining what their proposed millage rate would be so and that goes into the downtown development authority to help us offer the services to the extra businesses uh, that we need to that we, we look to service thank you Ms. Handy and, and just for clarification I think everybody knows but I want to make sure what we're doing tonight is only uh, making it possible to add the county properties to this athens clark county properties but it, but it will make it easier and simpler for some businesses to come in if if they so desire and we're not going to be bringing anybody in any any properties in unless that property owner agrees to it so we have motion second any further discussion all in favor aye. 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 any opposed okay okay this is the time in our meeting that anyone who has something they'd like to speak to us about can have three minutes at the podium and please honor our three-minute uh, clock here. Uh, I'd prefer not to have to interrupt you. Um, so please come forward, give us your name and address, and I uh, would love to hear from you. All right. Where is, is that the yellow light? That's the light right there. Right. Uh, good evening. And actually, there's one, I believe, there at your podium, too. Oh, very yeah. good. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys tonight on an issue that could impact any person in this room at any time or a family member Excuse me, of theirs. Did you give us your name and address? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Sam Raffle, 230 Spalding Circle. I'm a public school teacher who's been certified in the state of Georgia as an EMT for 30 years and who's taught American Heart Association CPR for almost that long to thousands of children in Northeast Georgia and hundreds of adults. So I do know firsthand the value of rapid response in emergency medical situations from both the perspective of a EMS provider and as a parent of a then two-year-old child who was having severe difficulty breathing, who greatly benefited from rapid EMS response, for which I'm eternally grateful for. For the last 30 years, my heroes have been police officers, firefighters, and paramedics. My interest in the EMS response time issue has recently become more focused by the cardiac arrest downtown where it was reported that it took the ambulance 15 minutes to get there and by multiple conversations with police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and public school teachers who are voicing similar concerns about delayed EMS response. I've been told recently by multiple public safety personnel that we are just waiting for the right person to die or we are just waiting for a student die to make positive change in this area. But whose child will that be? And I don't want to find out. And that's why I'm reaching out to you and to community, other community leaders to raise the level of concern 
and understanding of this issue, and it's why I've asked for a survey of our public safety people so you're not just taking my word for it, the police officers and firefighters. The standard for uh, ALS ambulance response, that's advanced life support ambulance response to a medical emergency or a traumatic emergency, is to respond within eight minutes, 90% of the time. The way you achieve this standard is for the EMS provider to establish a 911 division that is protected for 911 calls only. The separate non-emergency division could run non-emergent calls at will and serve as a backup for the 911 division should that division get overwhelmed. You should never use a 911 ambulance to run a non-emergency call as it increases the risk of delayed EMS response to life-threatening emergencies like the one downtown. In athens Clark County, we're currently using average response times to gauge efficacy, and averages can be very misleading and do not come close to telling the story of response times. A two-minute response, which is wonderful, averaged with a 14-minute response, which is potentially life-threatening, average out to eight minutes. In the current system, the 14-minute potentially uh, life-threatening response would not even be considered aberrant. And that's why the goal is 90% of the time, oh, eight, within eight minutes, 90% uh, of the time. I'm also asking that these times be kept by an independent third party. Sam, that's I'm in our public so, sorry, dispatch I'm center. And I thank you for your time and for your service to our community. Thank, thank you. you, Sam. As, as, as long as everybody's respectful and quite sure. Hey, Don't look at me. Hey, good evening. Am I good to go? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Bob Gadd. My address is 134 Milton Road in Winterville, 30683. Um, I'm also here speaking about to voice my concerns over National EMS, the private uh, ambulance service that now runs Clark County in Athens. I'm a paramedic who recently celebrated 40 years on the ambulance working at St. Mary's from 1976 until 2009 when the hospital turned their EMS department over to National EMS. And it's a for-profit private EMS company. So in other words, it's a for-profit public service. Um, as a public servant yourselves, you know how interesting, challenging, rewarding, humorous, heartbreaking the job can be. So with that in mind, I chose to continue working in athens Clark County by transitioning to, uh, to National EMS. This allowed me to continue to serve the many patients I've cared for over the years. I took a significant cut in pay to keep working in this community, but that paled in comparison by the total disregard National EMS showed regarding adequate response times for emergency calls. It seemed every day a 911 response would be excessive because the closest ambulance that should respond would be on a non-emergency transport. Often an unlimited number of ambulances would be tied up in non-emergency transports, both local and out of town, sometimes for several hours. And these are trips to, um, say, Athens to Atlanta, Athens to Augusta, um, all over northeast Georgia. So um, they really compromised the 911 response, the way they uh, have their business model. When I approached the director, Robbie Atkins, about this and suggested to him to have a designated 911 division, he laughed a little bit and said they couldn't afford to do that. Then he went on to say, almost proudly, I treat all patients with equal importance. I'm not going to make a little old grandmother wait for transport when most of the 911 calls are for stubbed toes. So in other words, a patient going back to the nursing home is equally important to you having a heart attack or a stroke or a cyclist hit by a car. I've never quit a job over ethical reasons, but when I heard that, I started job hunting. I now work in Madison County uh, for the EMS, where we only run 911 calls. Thank, thank, thank you. you, Mr. Gadd. Yes, Hi, Mayor Denson, uh, Commissioners. I'm Kathy Willard. I'm the former Atlanta City Council President. I live at 490 Hamilton Street, southeast in Atlanta. I'm a UGA graduate, and I, I came over because I had been listening a little bit to the conversation about the public accommodations bill and wanted to offer myself as a resource. Um, Fifteen years ago, I introduced and my colleagues passed a comprehensive civil rights bill for Atlanta, Georgia that includes housing, uh, employment, and public accommodations in the private sector. It's the only comprehensive civil rights bill in the state of Georgia, including the state of Georgia. We're one of about five states in this country that don't have 
a civil rights bill. Um, and as you know, in the public discourse these days, there's quite a lot of conversation about um, inclusion and diversity and, and creating welcoming jurisdictions. Um, so what I wanted to say was um, in Atlanta, when we passed this bill 15 years ago, it, it was a little bit controversial. People were kind of like, well, you know, where you're doing the private sector, should we do this? What should we do? Uh, we created a human relations commission to hear complaints. Um, and um, what we found in the course of all of that was it helped us send a very, very strong message about the values of our community. Um, what it helped us also do is explore issues uh, maybe before they got to be too critical or to, you know, kind of too out of control. Um, I can talk to you a little bit more about the kind of legal aspects of that. I'm not a lawyer. I play one on TV, but I know this law really well. Um, but now, you know, as we start looking at what the NCAA is requiring and what conventions and what businesses are talking about in terms of looking at jurisdictions and saying, you know, can you guarantee that citizens and visitors are all going to be treated well, treated without discrimination, and let us see proof of it. What, you know, when you can say yes, but what are you going to do if it happens? And so I would submit to you that folks in Atlanta, particularly our Convention and Visitors Bureau, our Sports Council, are very, very, very glad that we have that ordinance now because when we're competing for convention business or when we're trying to attract a fortune company, you know, to Atlanta, Georgia, we can show our ordinance and say we have, as a council, have spoken, we have defined uh, all of the categories that are in federal law, but also sexual orientation and gender identity, which is not. And I would submit to you that it has not been particularly uh, controversial, but um, I'm happy to leave my card. I'm happy to speak to any of you separately and answer more questions, but thank you for your time. Ms. Willard, welcome to Athens. I, w I want to ask you something. I I'll, I'll, I'll ask everyone to pl please don't demonstrate. I know it's hard because I know you're passionate about this issue. I am too, whether y'all know it or not. And, and that's why I was going to ask Ms. Willard a question, which I don't normally do, but we don't often have an opportunity to have someone from Atlanta here that, that knows firsthand. I've been trying to find minutes to, from your uh, committee and have only been able to find, uh, to get a copy of the very last meeting. Can you possibly help me with that? Probably not. Um, I, I'm not trying to be obstructionist. It was just 15 years ago, and I don't, you would have to go to the Atlanta City clerk to do that. We, we did, and she hadn't been able to find them either. Yeah, so. I'm sorry. I, I, I wouldn't have that. I certainly have copies of the legislation. In fact, I've, I've gone over it with several of the attorneys that brought it forward mm -hmm. to me just to make sure that we were still legally relevant because, you know, over 15 years, stuff kind of changes. Right. There's a couple little things we would tweak in there. They're not significant, but, you know, some of them are just kind of jargony that are a little bit old-fashioned at this point. Um, but I'm happy to go over that with you. And, I, and as I said, I'm happy to oh. talk to you about the Human Relations Commission sure. as well. And, and I've, I've read your legislation, too. And, and the reason I ask that question, for those who are here who are so passionate, I'm not going to get into dialogue with anyone else tonight, I promise. Um, but... I've been trying to find um, what what the outcomes are of, of these um, ordinances, not just, just the ordinance on a piece of paper. And that's why I'm trying to find out what's effective, what's, what's been done, what has been the outcome of it. So that's why I'm trying to get, or, get minutes to find out what kind of issues have been dealt with and what the outcomes of them were. So, that so it, you want the min minutes of the Human Relations Commission, yes, not yes, the minutes of the City Council? Oh, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, it's the city attorney that should be staffing those meetings. That was mm -hmm. who staffed it when I was president. So mm -hmm. Shirley Franklin and I were mayor and, and um, president at that time. And, and to be frank, as you know, oftentimes ordinance get introduced in one administration and then another one comes along and you never really know whether mm -hmm. the priority is going to be put on it. We, we put a big priority yes, on it and worked on it. So I would ask the city attorney... Um, because they should have someone present at those meetings, but I don't know if that's the practice yeah. now. Yeah, but we'll try again. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Good evening. I know Good many evening. of you. My name is Carol Sunland. I live at 675 River Mountain Road, right near Mia Denson, and um, I wanted to speak in uh, support of the Athens Civil Rights Committee. Uh, the things we would see it as doing is be a diverse body of residents reflecting our community, assist people in navigating the process 
of filing discrimination complaints, research and evaluate current problems and possible solutions, make recommendations to the ACC government on how to effectively address discrimination, and advocate, educate, and promote mutual respect and understanding in Athens, Georgia. I know that you agreed to put the ordinance on for next month. I would like to see that ordinance exp expanded to include all establishments with liquor licenses. To me, it's very important that this city be known for being non-discriminatory. That's all I have to say tonight. Thank you, Carol. And, uh, and again, please, because we, we have a lot of people that need to speak. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name's Allie Halbert, and I live at 160 Dudley Drive. I'm with an environmental nonprofit called Dogwood Alliance that represents nearly 6,000 people in Georgia. I'm a new resident to Athens, Clark County, and I've lived here for about two months. First, I want to thank you all for your service and leadership in our community. I really appreciate the dialogue that's already taken place and the willingness to listen. I'm here today in hopes that we can bring this leadership to the world stage by presenting the opportunity for you all to sign on into a letter honoring the International Day of Natural Disaster Reduction, which is coming up on October 12th. One of the things I have loved most about living in this region of the South is the sight of our beautiful forests. When I see our southern forests, I see our livelihood, where our community can hunt, swim, fish, hike, and camp with friends and family. Not only do these forests provide personal recreational benefits, they also provide our community with a plethora of benefits, including water filtration, carbon sequestration, protect protection for plants and animals, and they safeguard our communities against the worst impacts of natural disasters. Natural disasters can threaten our local infrastructure, lives, and local economy. But there are simple preventative measures we can take. Our forests are one of our greatest defenses against the worst impacts of natural disasters. Yet currently, our forests are being cut down and shipped to Europe to be burned for energy. The southern United States is the largest supplier of wood pellets in the world and exported 5 million tons of wood pellets in 2015. The United States is increasingly turning to burning trees for energy. Unfortunately, these wood pellet facilities are close to home. There are a total of three proposed wood pellet facilities and incinerators in the Athens area alone. These facilities would threaten our environment, economy, and community health. On numerous occasions, the wood pellet industry has been documented to clear-cut whole trees, hardwoods, and wetlands. I care about our environment, and importantly, I care about the people who live within and depend on our forests. Even more, taking forests from the south and burning them in European power plants reduces the ability of the south to protect itself from increasingly frequent natural disasters and storms. Whether it's flooding, landslides, tidal waves and storm surges, fires, drought, or hurricanes and storms, forests have, have a role to play in the protection of our lives and our pocketbooks. It's clear that when our environment hurts, our communities hurt. So right now, the European Union is drafting a policy that would determine the future of our forests here in Georgia and across the South. We have a unique opportunity uh, to show them the important role forests play in protecting our Southerners against natural disasters. Together, we can protect our forests and therefore our communities and our local economies. So which is why today, I'm asking you all to sign, a, sign on to our International Day of Natural Disaster Reduction letter to be released on October 12th. Signing on demonstrates to the European officials that local elected officials in the South value our incredible resources of forests and that our own local elected officials understand how forests protect us from natural disasters. As leaders in our region, you all have a powerful voice to incite change for a healthier tomorrow. If you sign on, you will join the bipartisan group of elected officials across the South who are taking a stand for their force in their communities. So I thank you all again for, for your time today. I have printed letters if you're interested in signing on, and uh, I'll be available afterwards to, to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Sober. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Ruhol Aga Saleh. I'm a UJ graduate and currently the communications officer of GLOBES, the LGBT faculty and staff and graduate students of the UGA. Um, Mayor Denson, we are writing to you as we trust your promise when you wrote your letter to us. Quote, my door and my heart are open to you. Please call, me, call on me when I can be of help to you, in quotes. 
as you are aware, many of us, along with other flow residents of athens Clark County, have contributed in what is known as anti-discrimination movement. We are so excited that the athens Clark County Mayor and Commission will consider this excellent cause. Hereby, we want to echo this legitimate request to incorporate into the pro proposed anti-discrimination ordinance a civil rights committee previously referred to as a Human Relations Commission, whose task is to review and recommend action on issues and concerns related to human rights and civil rights. Evidently, members of LGBTQ plus community of athens Clark County have suffered from discrimination and harassment and believe that the county can no longer ignore the discrimination occurring in Athens. Although the county's proposed anti-discrimination ordinance is a great step in fighting discrimination in bar establishment on the basis of race, color, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, religion, nation, and national orig origin, citizenship, age, disability, or pregnancy, it does not adequately address the concerns of the un 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 underserved population. We believe that the Civil Rights Committee is critical to ensure that the proposed ordinance will be effectively enforced. The purpose of this committee, as explained by other fellow residents and our allies, should be to educate, advocate, and promote mutual respect and understanding, collect data for action. We, uh, with the mayor and commission, monitor actions of appropriate go uh, governmental bodies in addressing <coughs> discrimination, harassment, ha harassment claims serve as a liaison between the county and local diversity and minority organizations, and periodically report to the mayor and commission on the extent of violation on, in, in athens Clark County. The activities of the a ACRC and the overall health of human relation in the county. athens Clark County will benefit from a diverse committee that re represent the people who are most vulnerable to discrimination in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Walton. I live at 130 Churchill Circle, Athens, Georgia, 30605. And I've been living in Athens, Georgia since 1985. I'm a transplant from Louisville, Kentucky, and Chattanooga, Tennessee. And since 1989, when I graduated from Cedar Shoals High School, I've been in and out of Athens throughout my adult life as an entertainer, an artist, comedian, poet, musician, just a unofficial mayor to the rest of the world, to those people who might want to come to Athens and try to find a good time. But within the past year, I found a few different instances of discrimination that went against my son, who was 23 years old, and my dad, who's 62 years old. And it infuriates me to the point I'm wondering why I don't see more faces like mine, filling the hallway, screaming up and down, jumping, wondering what's going on in the city. Well. I love Athens, Georgia, and I don't think I'm going to be moving anytime soon since I have lived all over the world since my time in the United States Air Force and when I left to go to college. So times are changing, y'all. Today is the day that we all come together because this affects every last one of us. So I just wanted to come and say hello to everybody. I work here at the Classic Center, and I spend a lot of my days feeling invisible. Well, I'm not invisible today. Today, we all scream together that things will change. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Walton. Good evening. I'm here. <clears throat> I'm here in support of the creation for the Athens um, Civil Rights tell, Committee. Please tell us your name. Oh, yes. Grace. My name is Mansoor Buffins, and I live um, at 415 Baxter Street. I serve as the president of the UJ chapter of the NAACP, and I uh, prepared a few statements for t this evening. Um, unfortunately, our community here in Athens has not completely purged itself of racism, bias, and discrimination. Uh, these are things that our nation continues to suffer from. And I have been taught as a child and young adult to expect racism, but to never accept it. If I were to go downtown on a Saturday night, I would expect to be denied entry from multiple bars because of my dreadlocks. 
They may not say it, but my hair is the reason, and that would be expected. But I, as a moral student, person, and leader, will not accept it. Unfortunately, many of my fellow peers, myself included, experience this discrimination. Sometimes this discrimination downtown is based on race. Other times people are denied because of their gender expression and sexual orientation. And it's wrong, it's upsetting, but for many, it's expected. However, it should not be accepted by anyone. Yes, work has been done to address the issue of discrimination downtown, and thank you so much for that, but the Athens Civil Rights Committee is necessary because the discrimination will continue. We need a committee that is supported by our local government that will work to support Native Athenians, UGA students, as well as visitors who experience this discrimination. A committee that will validate our experiences, assist us through the complaint process, and help to make Athens a more inclusive, respectable, and accepting city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buttons. Hello, my name is Heidi Elrod. I live at 2505 West Broad Street. I'm sorry, Heidi, I didn't get your last name. Elrod, E-L-R-O-D. Okay. I asked a lot of people if they've ever, if they felt like they've ever been discriminated against in an Athens business, and a lot of people raised their hands. And I asked them if they'd be willing to come speak tonight, and no one raised their hand. They don't think anything will be done. They don't think it's worth it. They think that that this community, that community, has tried as a group and failed so many times that it doesn't make sense for them to speak up anymore. By us not doing anything, we're part of the problem. These beautiful people here tonight, everyone here who is here to support the Athens Civil Rights Committee are the people that elected you guys. And this is what they want. This is what our community wants. We need an ordinance to stop discrimination, not just in bars, but in other businesses, in retail stores, and restaurants. And we need them to be punished for, for discriminating against any type of community. It's not OK. And we need the Athens Civil Rights Committee to back them up. We need these victims to have somewhere to go. I just really want to stress that our community standing here tonight elected you guys, and this is what they want. Please give them what they want. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Elrod. Good evening, American Commission. Broderick Flanagan. 1645 East Broad Street. Um, I come before you guys tonight um, as humbly as I know how. Um, thanking you first for you know adding it back to the agenda for November. Um, it's unfortunate that it comes to this type of demonstration to make that happen. Um, I too want to speak to the anti-discrimination and ask that it be expanded. Um, there's a lot of discrimination going on in Athens outside of the bars. I myself I felt like I've been profiled here recently. I've been pulled over three times within a 35, 40 day span. Only one time was I given a citation. Um, I, don't, I don't feel like there's a justification for that too much interaction for one person with um, the law enforcement. I know uh, Chief Freeman personally, he's doing a great job, but it's, uh, it's hard for him to keep track of everything that goes on with his new cadets and whatnot. But there's a, a type of energy out there that treats African Americans as criminals, and it's, it's unacceptable. So when this, um, you know, ordinance comes back up for a vote, I hope that it's expanded to include at least restaurants for now, and you know, in the future, who knows? But also to form a civil rights committee or human relations council to help to document and pursue some of the cases that are going against uh, people here up here in Athens. So um, I would love to see that, that happen. And I hope that you guys can take your moral compasses out of your pocket and point it towards justice and equality. Thank you. Woo!
Thanks, Robert. Robert Flanagan. Good evening, good evening, good evening, Mayor and Commission and all supporters here tonight. Alvin Sheets, Post Office Box 5142, Athens, Georgia, 30604, and I shall not be before you long. This Human Relations Committee or Civil Rights Committee, however be it, the NAACP supports it. However, there needs to be a great deal of thought on how it is, how its members are selected. For an improperly selected committee could be a challenge could be a challenge for many. It's not just bars, bars and restaurants downtown that, uh, and other businesses that, and it, that, that are an issue. We must address all of athens Clark County. And you know, many of you heard me say it before, from the government down, because the government sets the pace and the tone. The only reason these businesses have gotten comfortable in practicing the discriminatory practices that they put in place is because they felt comfortable within our government, government operations. So we got to start at the top and work our way down through it. I would, uh, I commend the mayor for taking her time and uh, reviewing this thing. And I, I would hope that all of the proper and right thinking bodies, if you will, will do their due, due, due diligence and make sure that this thing is properly, properly constructed with proper mindsets and hearts in place. With that, have a wonderful night and I'll see you next time around. Thank you, Mr. Sheets. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Commission. My name is Mary Miller, and I live at 240 Tearaway in Athens. In 1961, four years before he got his head bashed in on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, John Lewis got beaten up again before. This was at the bus station in Montgomery, Alabama. He was a freedom rider. Many years later, in 2013, the police chief of Montgomery apologized to Lewis for failing to protect him. I mention this as to illustrate the fact that hearts can change. And this is why, although we do need the anti-discrimination ordinance, thank you for returning it to the November ballot. Commissioners, please vote in support of it. That ordinance does not go far enough. We need a commission that will allow dialogue between folks who don't understand each other to reach an understanding. I love Athens. I've lived here for over 20 years. When I hear stories about discrimination in the bars and in other situations, this isn't, I think this isn't the Athens that I know and love. And for those of you who may not know, some of the people who are speaking tonight, Monsieur Buffins has started a, a group uh, for young black men in Athens. Broderick is active in the community. These are not just folks who came out tonight to be rowdy. These are folks who are putting their heart and soul day in and day out into the, the safety and well-being of this community. And I really encourage you all to go forward with the commission. I think we need it. I think it's essential to make Athens the place we all want it to be. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor and uh, Commissioners. My name is Gretchen Elsner. My uh, address is Post Office Box 562, Athens, Georgia. Um, I um, want to remind you guys that uh, 2016 is, has been the hottest year on record since people have started keeping records. Um, the parts per million of carbon in our atmosphere has now topped 400, uh, which uh, global bodies recognize uh, creates an environment that we all share that is unsustainable. And it is people of color around the world who are suffering most for the comforts and conveniences that we appreciate so much. The opportunity that I have to ride down a bicycle lane to go shopping at the grocery store or ride out to the Lowe's on Epsbridge Parkway in case I want to buy some plywood. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, our lifestyle here in this part of the world has got to be scaled back because by taking advantage of so many privileges, even to be able to stand up here and, and speak about these things. I mean, there are people who are eating their seed corn. 23 million people in Eastern Africa are starving right now. And we've been waging war on people of color around the world to fill up our gas tanks for pretty much my entire education. 
And if that's not discriminatory, if it hasn't impacted a lot of people here in this room, I'm 35 years old. You know, this has been going on for decades. Um, the things that can be done here in this community to start putting solar on our municipal buildings to reduce the carbon impact of our city government, the things that we can be doing to encourage transportation choices. I mean, when I see people riding across town like I do everywhere I go, I see many, many people who use their bikes as transportation. They're primarily low-income people, um, you know, of all colors. But, um, you know, we see that uh, very infrequently are um, our transportation accommodations prioritized in neighborhoods where people need their bicycle to get to work or to get to the grocery store. Um, it's it's dangerous. It's not easy, and it also um, is impacting people all around the world, all around the world. Um, and we had better unite or die. And I would like to ask you, please, to take climate action seriously. Find some way to uh, work the budget, and you know work our conscience because this isn't just a local issue. It's it's a global economy and a global ecosystem. So, and I'm happy to be a new business owner running a bicycle business. And you know what? We're going to pay people a living wage, and we're going to use all those bike lanes and pay you guys some taxes. So that'll make the decision way easier. And Thank you so we, much. We saw you in the paper, Gretchen. <laughs> Hi, my name's Joel Huff. Um, I've been an Athens resident for four days now. Uh, I live at 129 Pine View Drive. Um, I formerly lived over in Barrow County, um, which was an absolute nightmare. Um, when we talk about discrimination and the major issues, civil rights issues that we've been facing for the last 200, if not longer, at least 60 years, um, that county is at least 60 years behind the rest of the country. Um, I intentionally moved to Athens because I felt that it was one of the most progressive places in the South, especially in Georgia. Um, I'm very inspired by all the people, all of your citizens standing up and voicing their opinions and wanting to see local change. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit different perspective because as a white male, I experience the opposite of discrimination. I constantly go into businesses and I find people wanting to give me extra advantage because of the way they look. They think that I automatically share their racist opinions just for the simple fact of the color of my skin or the complexion of my hair. Um, if you don't think that it exists, you really need to start being aware of the, your communications with business owners, with local um, students, uh, with teachers, professors, and just listen to the way they communicate to you. If, the, if they, you start to see that you're getting extra advantages just for the simple fact of who you are or who you represent within your position, then you need to do a little bit more self-evaluation of why you're getting that personal benefit. So thank you for your time, and I appreciate it, and I love this town. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jamaica Patman. I am 24 years old. I am a college student in Athens Technical College, and I am here to basically just ask that we get this ordinance for the anti-discrimination. I think it's sad. I've lived all over the world. Um, I grew up in Denver, Colorado as a military family, um, also Nashville, Tennessee. And when I got back to Georgia, it was sad to see how much discrimination and racism there there is here for this to be a college town and it's not just the bars downtown ladies and gentlemen I used to like to go to Sam's clubs and Publix and it's sad that you can't shop at a grocery store because of the color of your skin like at Sam's Club they don't want you shopping there so it's it's more than just the bars what we need to pay attention to it's racism all over this town and it hurts my feelings to tell people who visit Athens the truth it hurts to say this is a racist town you don't want to visit Athens and I don't I don't want to keep saying that because I really do like it here I, this is my home I love my home I'm not a Georgia Bulldog fan but I, I love it here. So I just wish we can all come together. We all come from one God. We all bleed the same. I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. Whether I'm broke or poor or rich, I love you all 
the same, and I just, I just want it to be that way. So please, can we all just stop the hate and love each other? That's all I want. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jamaica. Hello, everyone. My name is Ashley Cox, and I live at 2119 Athens Ridge Boulevard, and I'm a fourth year at the University of Georgia. There was a bill just passed um, that said that it is not illegal to discriminate against people with dreadlocks in the workplace. It is a shame that legislation to enforce discrimination has passed, but honestly, I was not surprised because we encounter this subtle discrimination every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Items like chains, certain items of clothing, etc., are things that may get tax-paying citizens, as well as tuition-paying students, blocked from businesses in Athens. Hopefully, with a civil rights committee, discrimination like this will no longer be allowed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cox. My name is Micah Miles. Um, I live at 760 East Campus Drive. Um, I'm a graduate student at University of Georgia, and I'd like to tell you with my three minutes about a conversation I have with my best friend, Dylan. Um, Dylan and I have known each other since we grew up in high school, and Dylan uh, went to law school, just finished taking the bar this summer, and is incredibly excited, except not really, because he's become recently very disillusioned by the law. Um, I recently reached out to him about the legislation, or more the court case that decided that it is completely and federally legal for someone to discriminate on um, on a hiring basis due to me having dreadlocks. And he told me the legal basis for it lies in the 13th Amendment. And it is because I am not born with dreadlocks. I choose to put dreadlocks in my hair. And originally, that was the same mentality that was used to say that gay people are not really people because, you know, they chose to be gay. They didn't wake up and suddenly have this situation where, oh my god, this is so great. No, this is, this is actually something that's a part of them. And that's why it's OK in the 13th Amendment to protect them. And he's disillusioned right now, I think, because he's realizing that the law is not enough. The law doesn't make something right. The law doesn't make something moral. You need something more than that. You need a human touch. You need people who are put together in an organization to actually look at a situation and say, something about that isn't all right. Just because it's written in the law that it's okay to tell me that I can't have dreadlocks in the workplace doesn't mean that I actually shouldn't do that. I'm a wildlife biologist. Every day I go outside and I spend hours in the sun, in the rain, in the heat, not the snow. But I spend all of that time working and if I tried to do so with my natural hair texture, it would not be easy. It would not be functional and I would not be getting my PhD right now. So I would just like to say that I think that this Civil Rights Action Committee is very essential because it needs the human touch, and that's what you were put in office for. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miles. Hi, my name is Charlie Gardner. I live on Oak Tree Square uh, in Athens, Georgia, 30606. I just, I'm kind of upset because I think this whole thing about Civil rights is a waste of time. It doesn't, it, it's a waste of money and everything. We shouldn't be doing it. There's plenty, there's no discrimination in Athens. I mean, look at this here. We've got the city council. Look at all the black people on the city council. Oh, sorry, there's only one. Anyway, no one discriminates against me because I'm a white man. But I've got a black daughter I adopted from India and Sandy Creek Nature Center, when she was seven years old, someone went, get your dirty black face out of here. Madam Mayor, Commission, staff, Jesse Houle, 260 North Chase Street. <clears throat> I'll try to be brief, but I want you to make no mistake about it. People are here tonight because they are upset. We're not here just to congratulate you for thank you putting it back on the agenda after you took it off. We've been wondering for a long time how come our leadership isn't leading? Where have you been? How long is it going to take? 
Some of you have been saying to us in private conversations, because you so rarely talk about this behind the rail, well, you need to get more people at that podium. As if the many people we've had come here before weren't enough. But you know what? This is the third time we've marched on City Hall about this. We've had 400 plus people, the largest demonstrations this city has seen in a decade, outside these doors. And I saw three of you at one of those events. So where have you been? And how long is it going to take? That's the real question we're asking tonight. Because it's great if you want to put this bar admittance ordinance back on the agenda, but what else is, it, what else is going to happen with it? What kind of meaningful action are you going to take? How long are you going to drag your feet? How long are you going to ignore the many people that are asking for you to actually, for once, act like leaders and fight discrimination in this town instead of acting like it doesn't exist? Hi, my name's uh, Michael Smith. I live at 147. First Street, and uh, I would like to point out a few things. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the mayor and the commission, uh, the county manager's office who had representatives at the MLK Day Parade. Uh, I'm actually very supportive of the revisions to the alcohol licensing ordinance. I think it would be, it's a great hyper-local legislation that addresses a severe problem that's occurring downtown right now, which is people going into a packed downtown on clubs mostly east of Lumpkin Street and been denied admittance because of their skin color, their sexual orientation, or a variety of other reasons. It is a powerful ordinance we can tell because of the amount of community conversation that has occurred because of it. But what people do not, aren't seeing in this ordinance is that the ordinance provides uh, legal counsel for complainants through an administrative hearing process through the administrative hearing office who also happens to serve as the county judge. Uh, in municipal court. So if they come to the county attorney's office and stage a complaint, if the county attorney decides that it should move forward, the county attorney's office will be assisting people with this complaint. However, if the county or attorney doesn't believe that there's reasonable grounds, then the complainant has an option on their own to go to the administrative county administrative hearing process. So it's not a question of whether what are the personal requirements of the county attorney. Every person will have an option to pursue this through that process on their own, which I think makes it powerful. It also gives the person the opportunity, whether you win the dispute in front of the administrative hearing office or you lose, uh, this, now, this part of it is according to staff of the county judge's office to appeal that decision in superior court. There's many other aspects about the administrative uh, law hearing uh, process. I was lucky enough to be trained in administrative law hearings for welfare rights advocates. This ordinance protects and nurtures a giving downtown as opposed to just laying out an agenda for other people to follow lock, stock, and barrel. It gives uh, people power to control their own lives and how people treat them downtown. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Okay, my name is um, Jasmine Mocha Johnson. I'm part of the Athens Anti-Discrimination Movement, 651 Lakeland Way Drive. Um, first, I would like to say thank you to um, Mr. Gertz and Nancy Denson. Um, the reason why I'm saying thank you is because just last week, they both took the time to meet with my husband and I to discuss. I wanted to understand. I wanted to thoroughly understand why they would not, ex why they would not expand the ordinance, why was it pulled off the agenda, I want to understand, I wanted to put myself in their shoes to try to understand. I did come to the understanding that there are certain things that you have to consider. There's legal 
ramifications that we might all have to consider. But walking away from both of those meetings, I also came to un come to understand that putting the Athens Civil Rights Committee in place, it doesn't hinder the ordinance that you guys already created, but it gives the citizens an opportunity for their voice to be heard. The same thing that you put in place, the anti-discrimination ordinance that you want in place, if it was to come to life tomorrow, citizens would not know how to use that. And I don't know who's going to teach them how to use it. They don't even have enough money to move forward with the case. So all we're asking is something that can be done. We know that it can be done. We're asking you to customize a committee that can address Athens city needs. We're not asking you to just totally go by what another state does. We sat down, we put the paperwork together and how we can benefit the community. And I've come, I've reached out to probably everyone here on this commission and it's only a few that has responded to even say, what do you have to say? And the mayor was one of them that has responded to say, okay, what do you have to say? And what we have to say is listen to the people. Listen to the people of your town. All we're asking for is to put something, a liaison, a safety net, something in place to where the citizens have some place to go, not just to address bar discrimination or discrimination that happens in bars, but to address any issue that occurs. And it gives the community a fair and equal chance to let their voice be heard. If you come to the point where you find that discrimination has not occurred, then at least you have a body in place that it can explain that and help the people of your town to be, all we're asking is for a liaison between the citizens and the government. Now you have the authority to, to create that ordinance or the committee, however you like. What we have given you might not be enough, but you have the power and authority to help your citizens make this town a better place. Thank you, Marco. My name is Uma Nagendra. I'm from 305 Willow Run. Um, I'd like to thank you for putting the bar admittance ordinance um, back on the agenda for November. Um, and I'm here to stress that a bar admittance ordinance is, is not enough. It needs to be expanded to um, beyond just bars that, have, bars that have liquor licenses and to include in um, civil rights committee. Because what uh, the current iteration of the ordinance does not include is for, say, when a building resident is pr uh, blocked from going to her own building's pool because someone thinks she's an intruder because she has brown skin, where is she supposed to go? Um, if a, a gay family is not allowed to join their homeowners association, this, uh, this ordinance does nothing for them. Where are they supposed to go? Um, issues like this are already happening in Athens. They're just going unnoticed by the wider community because they have no place to go here locally, and people very rarely have the resources and energy and, and materials to take a case all the way up to the federal level since the state of Georgia does not have its own um, anti-discrimination uh, policies. And so businesses and people keep doing what they've been doing because there's no consequences. No one's told them. No one's come up to them and had a conversation about um, why this is a problem. And the people who are being discriminated against keep getting discriminated against. And they'll take their business elsewhere. They will move to other parts of the town. And our community continues to be divided. Um, and we, as, a, as, as the wider community, we will never know um, which businesses are the ones that are um, treating their African-American customers like as if they're potential thieves or um, uh, muttering uh, slurs under their, under their breath as Muslim um, customers come into their stores. We'll never know because we have no system in place to keep track of that. Um, but this is, we can possibly keep track of that if we have a civil rights committee 
So I'm urging you to add that to the um, current ordinance. Um, how to fix all this. Uh, I, I was speaking with my cousin about this whole issue the other day, and, and he said we, should, we can just wait because time bends towards justice, and perhaps we can just wait until the right people are in power, until younger, fresher faces are, are in power. Um, which, sure, we can wait, but I don't think we have to. I think we have good people in this room already, um, and so I'm counting on you to do the right thing, because I think you can. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Tim Denson, 290 Midway Road. Um, I'm here, as you can guess, uh, also to speak uh, for the bar admittance ordinance that will be, thankfully, I'm very excited to hear, put back on the agenda next month, for it to be expanded and also to have a Athens Civil Rights Committee or Human Relations Commission put in place on there. Um, and I'm not here just also as for myself. Uh, that same push uh, has been now uh, endorsed also by Georgia Equality, um, the largest advocate in the state for LGBTQ rights. Uh, their mission is to advance fairness, safety, and opportunity for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and allied communities in Georgia. And uh, signed here by the, the executive director, Jeff Graham, who wished he could be here himself, uh, writes and asks for, um, well, I'll just read it to you. Dear Athens, Clark County, Mayor Nancy Denson and Commissioners, first we want to applaud you for the steps you have taken thus far to, ad to address discrimination by issuing the anti-discrimination re resolution, and more recently, by proposing an anti-discrimination or ordinance. These steps, while noble, are only the beginnings of a more comprehensive systematic solution to a complex systematic problem, discrimination. We urge you to support the following measures that expand the scope of the proposed ordinance and strengthen its enforcement mechanisms. To ensure the creation of an Athens Civil Rights Committee and to also expand the scope of the ordinance to include alcohol serving restaurants in addition to bars. We hope you, athens Clark County Mayor and Commission, will deeply consider the community's call to embrace diversity, guarantee inclusion, and promote justice and equality for all in athens Clark County. So I have a copy of this for each one of you. Um, and I hope you take it to heart. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Jensen. Hello. I'm JoLynn McAfee. I live at 840 Jefferson River Road. I'm a very old MSW candidate at the University of Georgia. Go dogs! Um, but what I would like to say is that it, this, um, we really need a civil rights committee because as a middle-aged white woman that I must look like a wasp because every single week I go into a store and a clerk or a num another white person will always make a comment. Like two days ago, I was in a store in Athens, and the, the clerk, there were two Latino women standing there talking. The clerk says to me, I can't understand anything they say. Or an African-American will be angry about something, and they'll go, oh, there's that angry black woman. Um, as long as these conversations are still going on secretly, there need to be protective measures and there need to be committees so that the minority can be heard because it is ridiculous that it's 2016 and I am still seeing this on a weekly basis. That's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? And any, anyone who wishes to speak, if you'll please kind of get ready to come up. Uh, anyone else? Hi, my name is Jordan Hobdy, and I live at 86 North Avenue. Um, I'm here to talk about the parallel ordinance regarding the deregulation of marijuana. Um, I think that it would be a great addition to the anti-discrimination initiatives being discussed tonight. Um, in the Civil Rights Committee. Um, but all of this, the parallel ordinance and the anti-discrimination efforts, take political willpower and courage. And we have to talk about the things that make us uncomfortable. 
And all talking about marijuana, talking about racial relations, it makes everybody uncomfortable, and sometimes we don't know how to deal with it. But we have to talk about it to make the change. Um, regarding the ordinance in Clarkston, um, I've spoken with Mayor Ted Terry. There's no problems, no GBI investigations, and the police chief um, said it's not making their job any easier or any harder. It's just changing things. Um, I think we may need to stop building bigger prisons and start building bigger city halls. Thank you. Anyone else? Bye-bye. It's good to see you. Good evening, and I do mean evening, everyone. I hope that you're doing well. In 1963, Tommy, you need to give us your name. Oh, I'm first. sorry. My name is Tommy Valentine. I live at 370 Cleveland Avenue. Thank you. Uh, in 1963, after JFK was assassinated and LBJ became the president, he immediately set to work on the Civil Rights Act. And a number of his key advisors warned him against this for a lot of the same reasons we're hearing warnings in this community. Business will fight you. People will fight you. The powers that B will fight you, your voters will turn away, your donors will turn away. You'll lose your presidency. And his response was, well, then what the heck is the presidency for? At some point, each of you looked in the mirror and you said, I'm qualified to represent some of the hundred plus thousand people in athens Clark County. You believed that this government could do things. You believed that it was capable of answering questions and taking on challenges. That's what you're here for. So yes, this is a tricky needle to thread. Yes, we don't want to hurt businesses. But that's why we elected all of you, entrepreneurs, professors, intelligent public servants, so that you can do this job. Discrimination is still very real, still very, very present. If you look at a lot of the numbers, in some ways, it has gotten worse in the last 10 years than it has been for four decades. And that includes here in Athens, Georgia, where the poverty is crippling and where racial elements are at play. I ask you and I urge you, all of you, to have the courage, because I already know what you believe. And that's what I just want to close with. I know from conversations I've had with many of you that you believe that racism is wrong. But this isn't a time for belief. This is a time for action. It doesn't matter what you believe. Lots of us out here believe things, but we don't have the power to change it. That's why we elected you, because you do have the power to change it. Because you do have the ability to figure out how to do this the right way. I have faith that you will. I have faith that this ordinance will pass. I have faith that the language will be added so that this will apply to restaurants. I have faith that we'll have an Athens Civil Rights Committee because it's the right thing to do, and I know you all want to do the right thing to do. If not, what in the heck is the athens Clark County government good for? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. Hello, my name is uh, Gabriel Mantioni Holmes. I live at uh, 240 Marion Drive. And um, I was uh, driving by and I saw this protest and I thought, hey, this is a thing I like. Hey, <laughs> this is a movement I agree with. And I was like, oh, an Athens Civil Rights Committee. That's pretty cool. That's something I agree with. And as I've heard all these speakers speak, I've heard of pretty terrible tales and I've had a lot of friends who've told me pretty terrible tales. And I think this Athens Riot Committee, Athens Civil Rights Committee, will uh, be a big impact because it'll allow people to know that discrimination isn't right. And because we don't have a committee yet, people are still like, oh, discrimination, that's a fine thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that, but there certainly is because uh, a lot of people have, I don't know how it hurts business. I mean... Mm, probably does. I'm only in high school, so it probably does. But it seems like that should attract more people, more business, more flow. I don't know. But 
I agree with this. I know a lot of my peers agree with this. So it's not just yeah. these uh, older folks who believe this. It's also the young people in high school. And this deserves attention, and it needs to happen now. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Yeah, y'all please approach the podium as the other speakers finish because it's going to be a long night for everybody. Uh, hello, my name is Amy Yoder. I live at 129 Ashley Circle, number seven, and I live there with my wife, which that may be why I'm here. Civil rights are something that's very, very important to me. All of these people have talked a lot about the practical ramifications of what we're trying to do, and that is absolutely commendable, and those things do need to happen. But I'm here to talk to you about the kids going to sleep tonight in Athens who can't tell their families who they are. Those kids who hear things at their churches, who don't feel right with themselves because they've been told by their community, their church, their family to be ashamed of who they are. And by passing this ordinance and starting this committee, you will be telling the children of Athens and Georgia who cannot express themselves freely because of their home situation, you will be telling them that the government, their city, has their back. I was in this city on the day that the Supreme Court decided that every person should be able to marry the person that they love. And I got married in this city on January 3rd of this year. And there was no feeling like knowing, having lived in Texas, Virginia, and Georgia, which are not the most gay-friendly states in the country, that finally the largest part of my government would recognize my love. That was an amazing feeling. But in Austin, Texas, they passed an ordinance similar to this b way before, and that was an amazing feeling. So at the city level, you can make an impact, and you can tell those children that their city, their government will love them, will stand behind them, will protect them. And children who are killing themselves because of who they are and what they hear at church and what they hear at school and what they hear from their families need someone who will stand up and say, I've got your back. And you guys have an opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else want to speak? So my name is Ashley Na, and I'm from 270 Cobb Street. I'm here talking with y'all today because I was here last month because I felt silenced and I didn't feel heard um, for the fact that the ordinance had been taken off the agenda. Yet again, I feel silenced and I don't feel heard. And I used silence as an offense that everyone in the room might most people in the room could relate to something that people could feel or have felt before and what kind of anger and urgency that may lead our hearts to fill up with, I don't know. Um, and I also expressed that discrimination is not something that everyone in the room or even most of the people in the room have been accustomed to or have ever felt in their lives. And I think that it's important that we remember this and that every time the agenda is lacking this ordinance and every time that we stop talking about this ordinance, more people are feeling that feeling of being discriminated against. And I think that might be a reason why the urgency, I'm not sure, I can't say that, but I think that it's important to note that people are upset and they continue to be discriminated against. So every second that you wait is another potential act of discrimination and as we've seen in other cities and in our city also, just lives are lost, um, you know, confidence is lost, hearts are lost with each minute that passes by. Um, so, yeah, I think that the reason why we're all in the room and the reason why we couldn't be quiet walking in and the reason why we will not continue to be quiet is because you have been asking us to be, be patient, you've been asking us to be quiet and to silence us so that you could maybe work on an ordinance that we've seen nothing of that would include a civil rights committee. 
Um, and so I'm asking you all to maybe feel that urgency tonight and um, to prioritize this, which I haven't seen any evidence of, um, so that we can move forward and you can have us be quiet. If, <laughs> yeah, like you know what we're talking about, you know what we want. And um, I think maybe just having conversations with people in the community outside of this podium, because there's no dialogue that happens, to maybe get a sense of what we need and how we're gonna actually get it accomplished um, could be nice. So, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Law. Richard Banton, um, 397 Bridgewater Circle. I'm here to beat a dead horse. So, um, no, but in seriousness, um, I want to lend my voice to the Athens Civil Rights Committee and the um, Anti-Discrimination Ordinance. Um, as someone who came to Athens almost four years ago, I can still remember the first time that I was turned away from a bar um, without any knowledge of an existing dress code. Um, and this happened, happened more than once. And I spoke with other friends who shared stories about uh, what, about what they went through or friends that they'd known had gone through similar situations where they were denied, where no de dress code was definitive, definitively established or publicly displayed so that people would know. Um, this is about more than bars, obviously, but that was the, my first brush with what we would call discrimination. And for a long time, it was something that, oh, that's just the way it is. I'll avoid those areas. And I just kept the anger to myself. And now it's finally great to see that there's a community that is angry. Um, and we should be angry. And I just think that moving forward, we should maybe have a community listening session where we think about the ideas about how, how to expand this. Um, and I would encourage every business owner in the room who owns a business to vocally support this with a label, with a sign on your business saying that this is a safe place or this is a place where we won't tolerate what we know has been happening for a very long time. With that, that yield. Thank you, Mr. Benton. Anyone else? My name is Katie Orton. I live at 250 DuBose Avenue, 30601. Um, I am kind of new to Athens. I just got here in June, and I'm working at Dundero's Kitchen and really loving it. Hopefully, I'll see some of you guys come through. I just wanted you to know that if I do see you, I love to chat, and I would love to chat about this. And if anyone wanted to talk about it, I'm really interested in becoming engaged in the community. Again, I just got here, and this was one of the first things that I noticed I feel like needs to be addressed. Um, so I was really, really happy to see that people are already pushing for a committee. Um, I wasn't here for the first round of it, so I don't really know much of the history, but I just wanted to urge you guys to listen to what everybody has been saying, and I wanted to reiterate that I support them and support all the people who have been um, just advocating for this committee and bringing it up and bringing it back up if it needs to be brought back up. Um, and I wanted to thank you all for the service you're doing and hope to see you guys around and, again, just please listen to everything that everyone's been saying because I think it's really, really, really important that everyone's so, so supportive here. Um, I think it's amazing that you've been listening this far, and um, I just really respect everyone in this room, and I wanted to thank you guys. Um, I just wanted to also let you know that when the time comes next month, I'm going to be here next month. I'm going to be listening for updates. I want to hear the updates. I want to know if there's any pushback or anything, and I'm going to want to be reading about um, you know, all the progress that's getting made because I know it's going to happen and I'm really paying attention. So thank you guys. Thank you, Ms. Orton. Is there anyone else that wants to speak? Come on up. My name is Michael Cannon. I'm on uh, 1456 East Broad Street. I hadn't really planned on uh, speaking, but I'm new to town as well. And um, when my wife and I moved to town, by the way, if you think being black in um, Athens is tough, try being Asian in Athens. It's, it's, it's worse. She's Japanese. But um, we noticed that there were basically three separate towns as soon as we moved here. And um, I like to go to farmer's markets. I, I was shocked that there's a black farmer's market and a white farmer's market. And I'm still shocked at that. 
And it's, you know, it's, 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 um, it's what you would expect. The white farmer's market is in a nice park. It's shaded. It's pleasant. It's in a, um, well, the, the black farmer's market is not in a nice park. And it's not shaded. And it's not as pleasant. And um, to me, you can't legislate attitudes. And it seemed like the um, separateness, separate. To separateness of this town is part of its um, is ingrained, and you can't make people want to be around other people. I live on East Broad, and I'm right. I feel like I'm right at the edge where I have black neighbors, I have student neighbors, I have white neighbors, and none of them talk to each other. And it seems like that's the um, the aesthetic here. And to me, just having a Civil Rights Commission is just letting people know that you're aware of it. Because to people that um, are not from here, it's very obvious that um, there's very separate uh, communities here and that they don't um, speak to each other. So I don't have any answers, but I think that the fact that you're willing to, or if you are willing to acknowledge it, I think... Um, that just lets people know that you're aware of it and that it's not okay, because it's not okay. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Anyone else? Go. Please come forward if anyone else wishes to speak. Okay. I'll go miss your chance if you don't start coming forward. My name's Eric Rose. I live at 136 Sterling Drive. Um, I'd just like to thank the commission for putting the uh, non-discrimination ordinance back on the agenda, but it's an ordinance that needs teeth. You know, um, a group of the last commission meeting I was at, it was suggested that, it, that groups of citizens could, you know, do the research themselves and form a case and bring it to the commission. But that had happened when the UGA student government association did the research brought it in front of the commission and, you know, I don't feel like they were really listened to. And um, downtown is surrounded by communities that are, you know, people of color, people, immigrants, people vulnerable to discrimination. And downtown should be a place where they can come to, to shop and to work and it, it should be serving them instead of, you know, like the diversity of Athens isn't really reflected downtown. You go downtown on a Friday or Saturday night and you you don't see the whole of our community there. And I'm angry about that. And I think that we need an ordinance to protect people and you know to to make people feel accepted. And that's really all I have to say. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Hey, um, Sean Corley, 225 China Street. Excuse me, tell me your name again. Uh, Sean Corley. Um, so first of all, I, of course, support these lovely people here who are here for the um, Civil Rights Committee. <laughs> I think absolutely we need that. Um, so I'm here before you guys today in the interest of discussing the parallel ordinance that we presented um, about two months or so ago. Um, and I would, I would argue this is a local issue and not to be passed off to the state, um, particularly the fact that the local government is the best uh, suited to identify the needs of the community. Um, and I, I'm sure you guys feel the same. Um, but I would also say as public servants, certainly uh, the courage or convictions must dictate your actions. So, um, and if you want to take my word for it, then perhaps look to Police Chief Scott Freeman. And continuing Chief Lumpkin's work, I, I would say Chief Freeman has hit the ground running in an effort to engage the community. He's led by example that officers was actively part of the community to address its ills. And so allowing officers discretion in situations to make an arrest or issue a citation um, is beneficial for everybody involved. Um, and firmly in line for the more of the department's commitment to community policing. Um, it is time to move away from broken windows policing and stigmatization of drug users. Do not moralize them, help them. This small step to allow officers autonomy can prevent citizens in our community from having a criminal record. And I speak this, to this in an effort to make the invisible punishments of a record not so invisible. 
being processed into the criminal justice system can disenfranchise citizens in ever economic, political, and social ways, the effects of which should not be lost on the mayor and commission when considering policy. Um, and just in working in one of the agencies in town, I have to process a ridiculous number of people for marijuana offenses that honestly should not be there. Um, and they have to deal with a lot of hardships as a result of this. Um, and I'll conclu conclude with the concept of legacy. How will, we be how will we be remembered when we are gone? I guarantee that we have given this all thought. It's a very human thing to do. And so I respectfully ask you, Mayor Denson, to assign this to a committee. How would you like to be remembered by the citizens you serve? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Conner. Anyone else? Good evening, folks. My name's Skip Eckhart, and I don't live here. I live in Dewey Rose. But I came down because uh, there's some problems with the state that you guys need to be aware of. First off, there is a city in the state that's deregulated marijuana. I know you, I'm looking around, and you guys are going, marijuana, it's a drug. Well, it is a drug. It's also a medicine. It's also the safest thing that we can deal with as far as any kind of medications that you can take. I'm telling you this from facts because three years ago, I was on 12 prescriptions. With my doctor's help and with my doctor's permissions, I'm off of everything now. I don't use cannabis in this state because it's illegal. But if I went over to Colorado, I could get medication that would help me and make my ailments a lot safer and a lot better than anything I can take from the pharmaceutical companies. Now that said, I've talked with Mayor Ted Terry down in uh, Clarkson about how he deregulated things. And what he did, he didn't go about things saying we need to do the police thing right, we need to do this right. What he did is he talked about education. Now what he did, he ta I talked with him at length about this, and one of the things that he brought up was the fact that when you go through the D.A.R.E. programs in schools and, and in, your, in your education in the schools here, that you're not told why these things are illegal, you're not told why they're bad for you, you're just told that they're bad for you. Now, like anybody else, when I was growing up, when you said the word no to me, I was the first one in line, okay? I don't expect everybody to be on the same level that I am with this because I've been dealing with this for over 40 years. Now, I understand that there are some issues with the city trying to do this. Mayor, I've talked to you myself, and, and I believe the words that I heard from you was, it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime. Well, I'm here to help you to make that decision easier. The fact is that because of the deregulation down in Clarkson, it's opened up doors that allow you to make these students and the people living in your city a little bit safer, a lot less set in a situation where if they get caught with a little bit of marijuana, that they're going to lose their schooling, they're going to lose their houses, they're going to lose their jobs, they're going to lose everything, and they're going to be caught part of this, this drug war that's literally killing American citizens everywhere it's happening. Now, we're all citizens of the same state. We all believe that Georgia is the most wonderful place in the country, or we wouldn't be here. The problem is we're stuck with archaic laws that are not logical, that are not followed up with any research at all. I'm asking you to take the time, talk to Mayor Ted, talk to the people in Clarkson. They've had wonderful results with this program. There is no reason why Athens can't do this and also make their citizens and their children have an easier situation with something. It's about education. Talk to your kids, talk to the people, do the research that's out there. It's out there more than your government will ever tell you about. You guys are wonderful folks, and thank you for letting me speak tonight. Thank you, Skip. Anybody else coming forward? Are you coming to speak? I'm beginning to feel like a broken record, so if y'all would just start, start up here, so I know that'd be great. Sure. Um, good evening, Brianna Bivens, 127 Riverdale Drive. I'll be very brief. I really don't like talking in front of large groups of people. Um, but I will say I'm here to, of course, echo the call for an Athens Civil Rights Committee. Um, I worked at a restaurant in Athens for a couple years the whole time that I've been here. And um, so many times I would hear other white families confide in me and assume that I share their prejudices. Um, one time there was a woman who was moving her daughter into um, an apartment, and 
she was describing the side of town and said that it looked like um, a dangerous side of town, a bad side of town. And to me, what she was saying is that bad side of town was the black side of town. So there is a larger discriminatory discourse that we need to address. And this Civil Rights Committee is just the beginning of, of doing that. We have to create a forum where we can have these conversations instead of um, talking in horrible discriminatory code. I mean, this Civil Rights Committee is what our community is asking. We don't necessarily have to tell you how to do it. We are here to tell you what we want. And I would like to think that it's the local government's responsibility to figure out how to do it. And we want an Athens Civil Rights Committee, so I hope you will uh, heed our call for that. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. Anyone else? Don't want to overlook anybody, so come on if you want to speak. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Taylor Lanham. I am a resident at 460 Forest Road. Uh, like so many before me, I am here to echo the call uh, once again for an Athens Civil Rights Committee. Um, what I want to say is that for all of you as policymakers, um, you are forced to prioritize certain issues. You put certain issues over other ones. Um, when you take this long to address the issue of discrimination in your city, when you take it off of your agenda, what you're effectively saying, what you're tacitly implying, uh, is that this issue is either not an issue at all or not an issue uh, worth your time. One of our previous speakers tonight has, uh, m has mentioned that this is now the third time that people have marched on City Hall over this exact issue. The only thing that I want to say, and it's something that should be obvious, is that this many people do not march this many times over something that is a non-issue. It is not an exaggeration. It is a real problem. And as our elected officials, you are charged with the responsibility of addressing it. That's all that I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Solano. Hey, Adam Lassala, 260 North Chase Street. Um, very briefly, we've heard a billion times from everyone ever since high school, ever since before high school, and every time we talk about activism or anything, and, you know, people need to get involved in local politics. They need to think about issues that are happening in their community, and they need to come out and tell people what they think of them. Well, here we are. Um, this is what democracy looks like. <laughs> Thank you. Any, anybody else before we come back behind the rail? I'm sorry, we don't let you speak twice. You've already spoken. Any, anyone else? Okay, we're going to come behind the rail. Um, and I'm gonna, we'll have our reporting period now. First one's mine, and I don't have anything to bring to you, uh, except I um, appreciate the, the civility and the um, courtesy that most of you showed tonight. Thank you. Um, Mr. Manager, do you have anything for us? No, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Behrman? Uh, nothing. Ms. Maddox? No, ma'am. Okay. We're going to go through our commissioners and see if they've got anything to talk about. We'll start with uh, Jerry Nee Smith. And we'll work around clockwise and end up with uh, Mike Camby. I'm the last. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You for, Mike. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for putting Mike last. <laughs> well, you may regret putting save, me save first. The best for last. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, first, uh, I want to remind everyone that this is National Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, so pay attention to your own mental health. Help and understand those who have mental health issues and learn about the resources that are available to those in need, including the Advantage Behavioral Health System, a publicly funded nonprofit whose mission is to serve those without the means who need mental health care. Second, regarding EMS response times, let me share the fact that I did with, with Sam Raffle uh, late last week that steps are being taken to monitor response times, especially by assigning Chief Scarborough to fill an empty seat on the advisory committee. He will provide us with those response times and we can take action accordingly. Third, I agree that the bar discrimination ordinance does not go far enough and like Mr. Sheets and others, I support the creation of an effective, sustainable human rights commission. I believe that that commission should be operated much like other boards and advisory commissions, such as the planning commission. Those commissioners serve as advisory bodies to the mayor and commission 
They, with staff resources, follow work assignments made by the Marion Commission, and those assignments include drafting and vetting policy and law of this county's government and includes the public hearing process. As you know, currently the state of Georgia has no civil rights laws, nor does athens Clark County. So the first order of business of a human rights commission, once organized and in effect, would be to draft policies for consideration by the mayor and commission. As an example, the Human Rights Foundation survey that was provided us to, to us by Athens for Everyone measured municipalities' policies, not effect, not, not citizen satisfaction, but policies in the following realms. Non-discrimination laws in the area of employment, housing, and public accommodations. Municipalities as an employer offering equivalent benefits and protection of LGBT employees, contracts, and treatment of LGBT employees equally. Municipal services to ensure LGBT con constituents are included in city services and programs. Law enforcement and fair enforcement of laws, including reporting of hate crimes, and engaging with the LGBT community in a respectful way, and relationship with the LGBT community to fully include them and advocate full equality. Those are the words of this uh, Human Rights Foundation. So those policies that were measured by the e Municipal Equality Index scorecard are probably would be quite easy for the athens Clark County Human Rights Commission to formulate, but I find them to be inadequate. So let's commit to take the time and expend the resources required to create a human rights commission that has a clear charge, a logical process, and the resources it needs to be sustainable and a part of this government. We will not do that in the next month. <clears throat> we have a series of retreats next month to set goals, so I am for us taking some time to formulate a plan and goals and priorities that include the creation of a Human Rights Commission and the first order of business for that Human Rights Commission, which is to make policies. Right now, if we have a committee, Human Rights Committee, there are no, are no policies for them to enforce or ask us to enforce. I'm not sure what they would do other than keep statistics. What we need are policies and a way to enforce them. Thank you. Thank you. I would ask you all please to be courteous that I've asked before and let the commission do their work. Ms. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to say I believe in democracy too. Activism is very important to make positive change. I wish to thank the people who've come forward and shared their passion for justice and this community. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also want to echo Commissioner Neesmith and uh, Commissioner Bailey's sentiments and, and thank folks who came out tonight. Um, the issue of discrimination is something that, that I'm very passionate about, and I've been working with a lot of the folks who came out tonight for several months and, and talking about this. And it's, it's very, very, very clear that our community needs a voice. Um, we need an outlet to have these conversations. You know, three minutes at the podium is, is not doing it. And it's very clear that discrimination extends far beyond bars in this community. And, and what we had been presented was an ordinance that was incomplete, um, you know, that basically said, you know, we care that you're discriminated against if you're a student trying to get into a bar, but we don't care about the rest of our community. So we need to take a stand. We need to come up with something that's broader, that extends out into our entire community. Um, you know, like, like we've said, the state of Georgia offers very little protection. And so I look forward to, to seeing that on the agenda, hopefully next month. And I look forward to the conversations that need to happen to create that civil rights committee. Um, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. It's, it's not reinventing the wheel. Dozens and dozens of communities across the nation have these committees. It's pretty much standard operating procedure in, in progressive communities across the nation. And um, whether or not one of our standing commission committees is tasked with creating that committee and creating the policies that that committee will address and enforce, or if we create a separate committee to specifically do that, um, 
I know when I sat on the inaugural Cultural Affairs Committee or Commission, um, we came up with our own mission statement and our own policies and procedures. So maybe that's the kind of procedures that, that would help formulate that committee. So I look forward to that process. I look forward to having these conversations publicly because it's, it's very clear that we've gone far too long not having these public conversations and our problems don't go away by ignoring them. It's, it's, it's only by addressing them that, that we move forward in our community. Um, I also want to address the folks from CARE about the marijuana decriminalization. My friend Ted Terry in, in Clarkston, um, they've pulled this off with no problems. Um, and I, I would love to see us take a look at it in Athens. It's something also that's being done in progressive communities across the nation and entire states. And I want to point out um, recent research out of the University of Georgia. There was a, a recent meta-analysis of multiple studies um, that talked about uh, the benefits of marijuana and, and the reduction in painkillers and anti-anxiety prescription medications. And we all know about the tragedy of opiate addiction um, that's hitting communities across the nation. And, you know, it's, it's something that, that could very well save lives if, if we were to take that first little step in our own community towards broader acceptance. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Uh, I've been very clear where I stand on the question of a civil rights body. Um, we know that discrimination in Athens didn't start at the bottle of a Dixie cup of cheap liquor on Clayton Street. And, um, and we know it happens in a broader social context. And, and that's true whether um, whether well, that's because of the color of your skin, the, the person who you choose to love, your age, your state of pregnancy, your disability. Um, we pride ourselves as being an inclusive community, and hundreds of communities across this country have created bodies to try and emphasize that inclusion by having dialogue and asking questions and doing education and shepherding those to legal authorities who can make solid actions based on cases of discrimination, and I believe we should do the same here in this community. Mr. Sims. Thank everyone for coming out and being vocal. And I guess I w if I were to ask the question, how many of you who were out there would be willing to serve on a human rights committee? Hopefully everybody would raise their hands and so that way we could see the diversity of what we have there because that's what we are looking for is diversity. Listening at the number of people that spoke tonight, it was very pleasant to see that we did have people from many different walks of life. Uh, didn't hear anyone from the AIDS area yet, but you know, that or the H H you know, HIV, but you know, all of these are things that when we talk about discrimination, it's not just a black and white thing anymore. Uh, so we, you know, I, I, I applaud you for coming. Hopefully, that when you're called upon, if this committee is created, that you won't have an excuse that you will not be willing to serve, that you would do your due, due diligence and be part of the solution and not think that this, we are part of the problem. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, I also appreciate everybody coming out and voicing their concerns. That's what this is all about. Um, I do want to, I've got a couple of things um, on the lighter side. I want to thank Central Services Landscape Management. Um, uh, if you live out in the district I do, we have lots of tall grass growing lately. <laughs> um, it, took a, it took a little bit longer because of all the rain what we've had to get it taken care of, but I wanted to um, thank them for modifying their uh, mowing practice in order to get what was currently on the road because it, people were having problems getting to their mailboxes. The deer are starting to move around. Lots of concerns about that. We had quite a few killed on Morton Road um, just in the last, last couple of weeks. So I just wanted to say I appreciate them modifying their schedule and it's now been cut in completion. So um, the other things that I don't know if, if some of the commissioners saw this or not, but um, of course I keep my eyes on this, is the athens Clark County was recently awarded a $29,000 foam recycling grant from the Foam Recycling Coalition. Um, and they're going to expand their foam polystyrene collection at the Charm. Um, they're going to use the money to buy densifiers to compact the foam 
into dense bricks will make it easier to ship it to market and whatnot. So I think that's that's awesome. So one more thing that um, people can, and that's foam grade foam products like cups, uh, egg cartons, meat trays that you might already be taking to like Publix or something like that. So you can do that. Um, and we are the first grant recipient, by the way, for this um, for the um, group. So the other thing um, is a, on a little bit more personal note. Um, my high school class of 1986, Clark Central High School class of 1986, celebrated our 30th high school reunion this summer. And as a result, we raised money. Uh, we, we raised $4,000, and we gave it Friday night. We um, handed it over to three different groups in Athens, um, mainly to support, to show our support for a community that supported us when we were growing up. And a lot of my classmates have gone on to be Air Force majors, one that was in the Pentagon when it was attacked, um, one that, uh, and then a Peabody award-winning producer, an NFL coach, our Clark Central football coach is a, is a classmate of mine, small business owners, firefighters, um, a member of the Denver Broncos Super, Super Bowl championship team, and of course myself. Um, so I think we've done pretty good for ourselves, and we gave uh, $2,000 to the Food to Kids program, 1000 to the Boys and Girls Club of Athens, and 1000 to the uh, Clark Central High School JROTC. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody also for coming out this evening. Um, and I think it's fair to say that I don't think there's a single person this side of the rail that does not think that the issue of discrimination is important <coughs> and that does not believe that there is discrimination that does take uh, place in, in our community. So um, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thank you. Ms. Bell. I think I can ditto what part of what uh, Commissioner Herod said, but I realize that there is discrimination beyond what we have heard discussed. And I appreciate your being here, bringing these things to more to our attention. I don't know where it will land in our attorney's hands on what we legally can do to appoint a committee and where our responsibilities come with that. But whatever it is, I hope we can work through what we need to to get some resolution and to get things to work in the right direction. This is very close to my heart. It has been for many years. So I'm glad we're moving forward. And thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Mr. Hamby. I actually have nothing tonight, Madam well, Mayor. Well, don't, so don't, don't, don't adjourn us just yet. I'm at a Jean. loss for words. I know it. I know it. It's, it's unusual. But, but, I think I, I think I'm going to take some time and go visit with the care folks. So before I, before you say <laughs> before you before you move to adjourn, I will tell you that I do have something I can't. Uh, it was it's not particularly a commission thing, but when Sharon mentioned a grant, um, it reminded me I've got a ten thousand dollar check in my purse for the uh, Athens Area Emergency Food Bank that I went over to Marietta and picked up from uh, Publix uh, that, this past week. So, or, yeah, last week, yeah. So, Officer, thank you. Please, now, please, sir, to her car. <laughs> now, Mike, it's back to you. I'll, I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all.